President Donald Trump. Quite a divisive chap. I have to say I don't like him, but then I'm British so I've got no say in who the Americans vote for. The last time the British tried telling the Americans what to do, they kicked our ass in the War of Independence. But even two years in, I wake up some days astounded that he is the most powerful man in the world. Most powerful person in the world, sorry, don't want to upset any feminists. Although I doubt they'll be upset about that one. And I drive to work every day listening to the news. And as soon as I hear President Trump, I cringe thinking, oh, what's he done this time? Has he accidentally nuked Brazil or opened a portal to hell? Because no news is too weird anymore. If you're old enough, can you remember the president before Barack Obama, George W. Bush? When he was elected, the rest of the world looked at America going, why have you elected this buffoon? The man's a bloody clown. He's not got a clue what he's doing. Little did we know that just a few years on, George W. Bush would appear calm and sane. In fact, if I could travel back in time to just before he finished his tenureship, I'd go to America, whatever you do, do not elect a black president. You've got no fucking idea what that's going to unleash. But as much as I don't like President Trump, I don't stereotype Trump supporters as much as some people on the left do. Because I think there's quite a lazy stereotype to say that everyone who voted for Trump is an extreme right-wing racist. And that's the same sort of lazy stereotype used by some feminist groups who go, oh, all men are exactly the same. And to use that example... All men are exactly the same, are they? So there's no discernible difference between Elton John, Usain Bolt and Hitler. Now, because of the wonders of uh, technology, I'm in contact with people around the world, many in America. And I know Democrats and I know Republican supporters. And not all Trump supporters are flag-waving racists. In fact, I wouldn't have anything to do with them if they were. But clearly, some Trump supporters are racist and they're quite fucking open about it. But then... Some people on the left, I think, are more subtle with racism. Because, let's be blunt, it's gone on from the dawn of time. Every race has probably oppressed another race in some way. Now, I'm a white guy, and I'm sick to the back fucking teeth of being told about all the bad things that white guys have done. I know they did it. It's nothing to do with me. And if you're judging someone based solely on their race, then you are a racist. And that includes if the person you're judging is white. And as long as we keep doing this, we're never going to fucking move forwards. I should now get off my soapbox and continue. I think Trump appealed a lot to true American patriots, a lot of the blue collar guys, because patriotism is something that America does so well. I've lost count of the amount of times I've turned the television on on the news and there's just a load of people going, USA, USA, in a street somewhere. I swear half of them don't know what they're there for. I think it's just something they do at American workplaces. After work, shall we, uh, shall we get together and start shouting the USA till a load of people join in, the news vans turn up. But that's to be admired. I understand fears about immigration. Um... Now, I live in, in England, in a very multicultural area, and there are people who've lived here 20, 30, 40 years, more than a generation, who've made no effort to integrate. They don't even speak English. And for me, that's baffling. Because if you're moving to someone else's country, surely it's for a better life, so then trying to assimilate into that country. And I get that some Americans are worried about people taking away part of their life. And another group of Trump supporters, I think, are the people who just wanted something different. They're sick of politicians talking the same fucking crap. And here comes somebody speaking his mind saying, we're going to make the country great again. And all of those arguments, I would say, apply to people who voted for Brexit as well. Calling every Trump supporter a racist and every Brexit supporter a racist doesn't get us anywhere because there's no fucking dialogue. So I hope now I've laid down the ground rules that I'm not attacking Trump supporters. Unless you are a member of the KKK, in which case... Go fuck yourself. But also, if you like an extreme black rights movement who wants to kill white people, you go fuck yourself as well. It's been ages since I've had any death threats. I'm getting withdrawal symptoms. And in all seriousness, in the time I've been doing Disgruntled Danny, I've had three or four death threats. They've all come from America, and they've all been by the type of people who I doubt could actually find England on a map. They're too busy fucking their cousins. They think Deliverance is a fucking documentary. So, President Trump... I haven't posted anything over the weekend because today is the 13th of November on a Tuesday and that means that the 11th was on a Sunday and that's the 100th anniversary or the centenary of the armistice that ended the First World War. So I thought I'm not posting any of my shit that weekend. But President Trump took to Twitter and that is the gift that keeps on giving. Tweeting that 
He's in France and he's here to celebrate a hundred years since the end of the First World War. What better to celebrate the end of a war? And I put my head in my hands and said, the word is fucking commemorate. It's a sombre occasion where you reflect on the sacrifice given by thousands. Not a fucking celebration. And what he was due to do was to go at God knows what expense to the American taxpayer uh, to a cemetery in France where many of the American soldiers who died in the First World War are laid to rest. A very sombre affair. But he didn't go because it was fucking raining. And as we all know, that's a fair excuse because World War I was mainly just a, a summer holiday for those soldiers laying about in balmy sunshine enjoying themselves. All that stuff about mustard gas, machine guns, tanks, barbed wire and death. That's been blown out of all proportion. And as you can imagine, this caused a bit of a fucking backlash. So it was on Monday, yesterday, that the story came out that this was nothing to do with President Trump. It was the pilots of the helicopter who said the weather was too bad to fly to the cemetery. It fucking wasn't. It was light drizzle. No airports were closed. And that the president himself didn't want to travel there by motorcade because it would disrupt the French traffic system. Wow, he did it to help out the normal Frenchman in the street. Except I don't fucking buy that because if I was the leader of the free world going to such an important event and he said to me, Mr. President, we can't fly there. I go, right, call the fucking press conference right now. We need to explain why I'm not going to be there. This is a big deal. And for a man that says so much about fake news, this comes across as fake news. I will say this. When I listen to a journalist, whatever they say, I take with a pinch of salt. When it's the current president of the United States, I don't want a pinch of salt. I need a fucking gritter.